through the chat, and then hopefully this will be taken care of as Hashem next time. Just uh, one question for the Olam. Did you see the first beer halacha? Okay, so I'm going to maybe go, I don't know if this is totally in the order or if this is totally out of order, but certainly the first, the first beer halacha, I think, is in order. Put oh, the first beer halacha I hear you on now. This. I hear you perfectly. Now you can hear me. Well, there's an echo, but I hear you, yeah. Oh, I see. Okay, so... But I hear you. The, I'm sorry. Now I hear you perfectly. You know, we had a spirited discussion, which the Rav did not hear in the last two, three minutes of our Chanashir about Rav Shalom Zalman's uh, issue of raising the flame after the plech was put on. Ah. Um, the island was going back and forth and that, and I said was, there were some questions on it, and I said, I'm not going to be Meirelach on this issue. Lefnei uh, Meirelach Rebbeinu, so I'm sure you'll address it um, because this seems to be some of the central things. We did see the first Bira Lacha. It's a beautiful was, topic. I'm not sure if I'll get to it at a safe this time, but that's definitely a topic that I'll get to Bli Nader next time. Okay. But let's go, let's go in order. Let's try Bez Hashem Rabbi Let's talk business over here. The first Bira Lacha. This Bira Lacha is a very, very big you say to stick a Bira Lacha. You could miss this Bira Lacha. He's a little small Bira Lacha at the beginning of the Suga. And it could be that one of the major you say this in the whole sugya, and even the nafkamin of a blech could come out through this bi'er uh, So let's try to see what's happening here. So the bi'er over here says, he's going off of the Shulchan Aruch, and we know already the rules that if there's a kira, so then in order to be able to cook, based on what we spoke last week, if you have either Hanan Yeshita or the abundance Shita, but in order to allow you to allow for the food to continue cooking throughout Shabbos, assuming it's a food that requires some type of uh, uh, a tikkun, kloimar, according to Hananya, under Michael ben Rizai, according to Rabbanon, if it's mitzvah, it be So now to leave it on an open flame is a problem. Kira shasuya kikdeira, v'shayv sen alpia, a kadeira l'mayla, and it has an area, so it's aser. You won't be able to, again, eat shita kifim ha'shahu. Right now, either we're talking about where it's under Michael ben Drisai, or if you want to get the Chumra that the Bi'ar Lacha said last week, we saw that there's a Tavila, there's, there's certainly a Lechatchila for a person, even when the food is fully cooked, to have some form of tikkun on the fire so that it'll prevent him from stoking. And we saw the Lashin of the Mishtabru and Sivkat in Yedalid, that what's the purpose of this tikkun, of what we call Grufa, the Ketuma, that he either covers the flame or he removes most of the coals. What's the purpose? The purpose is, is to show, like the Lashen of the Mishtabura, that he had a Hesach Adas, and that he's no longer in the cooking process. Once he does these things that no one does when he's in the cooking process, so now we're not afraid that he's going to come to go and stoke the coals. That's Adkan. Now, comes again the Bira Lacha, and he seems to have a, a new idea, a new plan. Very, very uh, uh, interesting. The Bira Lacha throws us in at the beginning of the simon, and it's very, very... Uh, it, it, you could miss this bi'er lacha. What's the bi'er lacha say? Comes again the bi'er lacha, and he says, "Litein alea." Lashon of the Shulchan Aruch was, "It's aser litein alea." You can't put on this kira on their oven systems that they had. They had a fire inside some type of a box, and usually you would either put the food inside the oven mamish on the fire, or it seems to be there was some type of a hole, and you would put the food. It would go through the hole, and kaneer it would hold it up. <coughs> And then the fire would cook the food. You're not allowed to do that if the food is something that's, let's say, under Michael ben Drisai. And you're not allowed to leave it like that during Shabbos. That's the normal way that you cook. And therefore, we're afraid you're going to stoke the coal. Says the Bi'ar Lacha, Hainu al-gaba kira, v'gaba nikra, u'yveid fanes akira. What's the Pashit case, says the Bi'ar Lacha? <clears throat> the Pashit case is that he's taking the pot and he puts it onto the walls, the u'yveid fanes akira. Kol shekain neged the chalal kir lamalo. Kol shekain if he takes the actual pot, leaves it there in the hole, and now that's the most normal way of cooking. Kloimar, the bir is telling us if you put it in the oven, that will see his toich. That's for sure a problem. Even if you put it on, this seems to be some type of a wall that you could put a pot on. There's some type of a wall that you could put the pot on on top, and then there was a hole. So you have the the roof. On the roof as a whole. If you put it on the roof, that's also, says the Bir Lacha problem. Kanira, they used to cook there. Says the Bir Lacha, certainly, if you put it in the hole itself, that was the most normal way of cooking. And this is Pashit. Then the Bir Lacha says, but what about the Kisui? 
it seems to be that there was some type, a lot of the oil probably has on top of their stovetop, some type of a, a lid that comes down. So if you hear, there seems to be a lid that blocked the hole. You don't want things falling into the hole. So they had a lid that blocked the hole. It seems to be this lid was something that also <clears throat> would get very hot. Don't forget the Kira had fire going the whole entire time. And now the Beer Local is a Shiloh. Can I that's, put, oh, Sorry? That's the, black, the rough means the black metal things that you put the pot on. Is that what you mean? Another, a, a, a trivet you're discussing or no? Those called the black. Uh, is that what you mean? The thing that blocks. I'm the talking hole? about on their oven systems, they had a pushet lid that would cover the oven. It would cover the hole. Claim out. You're talking about a grate. A grate. A grate. Right, that's so, what I'm saying. No, no, no. They had a, a, a totally different structure. They had a, imagine a box with a hole. I hate to use this as an example, but the one that comes to mind is a toilet seat. And you have a toilet seat, a box, there's a hole in the middle. Says the Be'alacha, if you put the food inside, mamish in the hole in there, that's toich, that we didn't learn yet. If you put it on the seat, what we're calling seat, the Be'alacha, that's also awesome. Now, that would be the normal way of how they cooked. If you put it in the hole, that's for sure also. That's the most normal way of how they cook. Now the Be'alach is clearing that there used to be the lid of the toilet seat. That's what they used to have. They used to have a lid that they would put down and that would block the hole. And that itself, let's say in our imag imagination, it was, let's say, metal. And you would want to put a pot onto that. <clears throat> so would you be allowed to put a pot onto that, onto that lid? In other words, it seems to be that this wasn't maybe the way they cooked. And the Be'alach is clearing, is that a normal thing? You didn't do something to the fire. Mitzad Sheni, the fire is blocked. What's the locha on Arab Shabbos? If I want to put an under Michael Ben Drisai food on this lid, am I allowed to? That's the Be'alach is clear. <clears throat> now, Baisai, before we go weiter, if we were discussing this Shaila, well, how would we discuss the Shaila? I would turn to my wife. I would say to my wife, Rebetzin, what's normal? <laughs> is it normal to cook on this lid? So my wife would say one of the two. If she would say, yes, so then I would say, it's normal to cook. You cook like this during the week. She'll say, yeah, because sometimes the fire is very hot and I don't want it to be so hot. So then I cook like that. So then we know the secret already. The answer is, if that's the normal way of cooking, the whole purpose of these tikkunim of grufa viketuma is to show I've been Messiah das. I took off my chef hat. I took off my apron. I'm not in the cooking process. If I ask the Rebetzin and she tells me this is the normal way of how she cooks during the week, so then, of course, this is going to be us, sir, and you will not be allowed to leave a pot, not inside, not on the sides, not in the hole, and not on the lid, because that's a normal way of cooking. If I turn to the Rebetzin <clears throat> and I say to the Rebetzin, Rebetzin, do you cook like this during the week? And she says, no, of course not. Nobody cooks like that during the week. It won't cook. It'll, it'll warm it. Maybe I'll leave things there because it warms it up during the week. But she tells me that's not the way we cook. So then Rabbi Isai came over. I take a Veldik. So this shows I was Messiah Das. So before we even begin the Bir Lacha, we don't know what could be the Claire of the Bir Lacha. What could be the Shaila of the Bir Lacha? The Bir Lacha is clearing a Shaila. I know for sure that I'm not allowed to put it in the flame. I'm not allowed to put it in the hole. I'm not allowed to put it on the sides. Now, Claire the Bir Lacha, what's the din of the lid? Kanira, these Kiras used to have lids. Lahavdil, like the toilet uh, seat lid, the toilet seat cover. So am I allowed to put it on the cover? So what's the Shaila Bichla? I know the answer to the Shaila. Go and look into Sivkot and Yudalid. And Sivkot and Yudalid, the Mishabru tells us that what's the lundis of Ketuma when I cover the flame, that's not the normal way of how people cook. So Mamela, if it's not the normal way of how people cook, then that is Hesech Adas. <clears throat> and you see that that's the key words over here. I was Messiah Das, I'm not in the cooking process. So Mamela, this is not a Shiloh for the Bir Alocha, this is a Shiloh for the Rebetzin. Go ask the Rebetzin, is it normal to cook with a lid? If the Rebetzin says, when there's a lid there, you don't cook, so then that's Hesach Adas, that's not a normal thing to do. Mashenke, if the Rebetzin said, that's exactly how you cook, so then of course it's a problem, because then how could you say, I was Messiah Das? This is a big cash on the Bir Alocha, but let's, it's new COVID, La Toira. Let's, re, let's let the Bir Lacha try to explain himself. But you have to understand going into the Bir Lacha that that's the first Shaila you have to ask. When you read it, Bir Lacha, you have to ask, what's the Kasha Bichlal? Is it normal? Is it not normal? <clears throat> so it comes again. And like the Oilam already is through the chat, realizing this could be a very big nafkamina, Klape a blech. This lid, is it a blech? Is it not a blech? The Bir Lacha certainly wasn't talking about a blech. He was talking about a lid that seemed to be on top of the oven. <clears throat> but maybe we'll be able to glean from there what's going to be the dinner of a blech. So the Bialocha continues, and the Bialocha says, You should know that Philoem him mechusa bekisa, it's a Rashi, Rashi daf lamed zayin says <clears throat> that it's Osir. 
a lid, you're also not going to be allowed to put the foot on the lid. Then he brings Ach from the Rambam. He has a whole diak in the Rambam. I don't want to go so into it. The Rambam, the Chazanish in Simila Madayan doesn't really like the diak of the Bir Lacha, but the Mishnabura is Madayak, ain't mashin al gabe ish, ain't sham mashmi, even on the keys, even on the lid. That, eh, 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 excuse me, the Chayyad al gabe keys, excuse me, the Chayyad al gabe keys ain't bechlal al It sounds like the only problem is when you're on the ish, but if the ish is blocked, then there's a kish, a key sweet. So the Bir Lacha says from the Rambam, it would be mashma that it would not be a problem. It's only a problem if you're putting it and it's exposed to the fire. But match ain't it if the fire is blocked. So then the Biyalacha says, I'm doing it in the Rambam that it's not a problem. Now, the Chazani says it's not such a diak. Okay. The Efsher, he says, what could be the Psha? Efsher, who can my shim kisa gechalim? So Mishabur says, oh, I'll tell you Psha. What's the difference if you have a lid? Or what's the difference if you have ketuma? Just like when you cover it with efer, so that works. So too over here it works. Then the Mishabura brings down, but Ayin and Sifit Gimel. And then the Mishabura, he comes out with these words. The Afa Pikain Sarich Ian Bedaita. The Allah is not sure. No, if somebody would ask me, so what's the din of a kisai? I would say, look, Rashi is clear that a kisai is yes, a problem, it's Asr, and the Rambam it's Sarich Ian. So I guess on this shaila you'd have to be Machmir. No, and right away, if I'm going to go and start being Madame to covering flames. So I'm going to say, I don't know. So if I take a black and I cover flames, Rashi's going to tell me it's a problem. And the Rambam, sorry, you have to be machna. This is Ad Khan, the, the, the Mishtabura, on face value. <clears throat> but Rabbi said, this Mishtabura, the Biyalaka, the whole needed is a Pella. Rabbi said, someone's for sure right here, either Rashi or Rambam, or maybe they're different Rebbitsons. Someone's for sure right. <laughs> What's the case? If it was normal to cook like that, so then of course Rashi's right. And if it wasn't normal to cook like that, so then of course the Rambam is right. Or at least the Diak and the supposed Rambam, the supposed Rambam. That, uh, if it's not normal to cook like that, then of course it's a problem. So there's a big Pella. Uh, of course it's going to be, if, if it's not normal to cook like that, excuse me, then for sure it's not a problem. If it's not normal to cook like that, so then Avada, he's doing something, he's showing us his Messiah Das. <coughs> so over here, Abba Yisai came along the Chazanish, a very, very important Chazanish, the Chazanish is in Simon Lamed Zayin and Sif Tess. There's also one in Sif Katim Yid Aleph. This Chazanish is one of the most important Chazanishes in the whole entire sugya of Shehia. <clears throat> Let's try and see what the Chazanish says. The Chazanish says over here that... Can we, do it the site? Can we get the site? Sure. Simon Lamed Zayin, Sif Katim Tess. Do you mind we put it up? It would be my greatest pleasure. It's in the book. Here we go. Sif Katan. Test. Simon Sif Katan. Test. Okay, so which page is that? It says it from the words, Roya Ani Daitchem, the Masha Kosov. Somebody give me the page number. 105. 95? 105. 105. Okay. Let the rub tell us where exactly you're starting, and we'll uh, read a From the bit. words, Roya um, Ani Bedaitchem. These are letters to somebody. To whom do we know that he wrote this to? These are in the Igrais? These letters are written to the Helika Shevet Halevi. Rav Vazna Zechat Tzadik Lefrache. In Shevet Halevi, Helik Aleph, Simen Tzadi Aleph. Over there, he has a big, uh, a big arichus about this. The truth is, it could be the one that you're looking for might be easier to find in Sivkat and Yud Aleph. Maybe that'll be easier for you. Uh, let me see. Keep on going. It gets cut off on my computer screen, so I can't see. <clears throat> Do you see the words Roya Nibedaitrem? Okay, I, I'm sorry for uh, interrupting you. I can't you. help you because I don't see. Uh, it's cut off on my screen. <clears throat> oh, there it is. I just saw it, actually. Now you lost it, but okay. Okay, I, I'll, I'll go right there in the meantime while you look for it. But Simon Lamed Zion, you've gotten Tess. That's the one I'm quoting in right now. No, it's still Lamed Zion, Tess. Uh, place that we're in the wrong place. Okay, I'm going to look for it in the meantime. If the no rough can, You give him an here. Givaldi. So the... the <clears throat> 
Uh, so the, the, the Chazanish explains over here a tremendous insight. The, because L'choyra, the Pashib Shat of how you have to learn this Bir Alacha, the Pashib Shat of Isai, it's a no-brainer <clears throat> that if it's the normal way of cooking here on the lid, so then it's game over. If this is the normal way of cooking over here, so then there's no Shaila in the world that you can't say it's Hesach Hadas. If this is the normal way he cooks, he puts down the lid, and I say it's a no-brainer, but even this in Mitzvah Shem will see is a Shaila. There's a Mashag that talks about this, <clears throat> but the Pashim Shad is a Vada. If this is the normal way of cooking, is that they had a lid, and they would cook even on the lid because the fire was very hot and it was a very normal thing. So then there's no Shaila. It's not Esach Adas. That's how he cooks during the week. We have to show he's not in the cooking process. So the Pashim Shat and the Bir Lacha Vada is is that it was not the normal way of cooking. No, so now the Kasha is on the Rashi. On the Deeg and the Ramam, it's not the normal way of cooking. So then we understand why such a thing would be mutter. If it's not a normal way of cooking, so then it's such a thing we understand would be able to, would have had to be mutter. How could Rashi say, and maybe even the Rambam, the Berlach is not sure. How could Rashi say, if it's not the normal way of cooking, you don't cook on a lid. How could Rashi say that this is going to be a problem of Shihiyah? Hare, he shows us that he's Mesiyah Das. And now I can make the Shaila even more intensified. L'chaira, <clears throat> my Shna from Ketuma. What is ketuma? Ketuma is I covered the flame and it's not the normal way to cook on a covered flame. So over here, if it's a, a lid and it's not the normal way of cooking on a lid, so you have here a flame which is covered and you have here a not normal way of cooking. So if that's the case, so then what's the pshat in Rashi? How can Rashi say it's Asr? The Chazanish enlightens us over here with a big sight. <clears throat> the Chazanish enlightens us that there's a very big difference between when I do something to the flame, when I am in my the chaim of the flame, I do something to lessen the flame's chaim. Or if the flame, nothing happened to the flame. Mitzad the flame, the flame could cook the same way. But I put the food in a position where it can't get the effects of the flame. Says the chazanish, that chazal made it a con. Takonas Chazal was like the Loshan of the Mishnah from the Ran, Lahaf Chisachoyim. That which is a Hesach Adas, you could, you could have done a lot of things. What if a person comes along? You know, I'll give you an example. In Hilchas Basa Bechalov, the person in Basa Bechalov, we know if you have milk on the table, meat on the table, you're not allowed to eat on the table. Because I'll say you need a hacker. What if I go and I decide, you know what? <clears throat> I'm going to wear uh, interesting socks. Every time I eat Basa Bechalov, I'm going to wear interesting socks. But that wasn't the Takon of Chazal. I, but you, you know for sure you're not going to mess up. You're not going to wind up eating the milk if it's on the table with the meat because you have those interesting socks. It's going to remind you. But Chazal said that has to be a hacker. So now, what's a hacker? You learn the sugya. It has to be a hacker. When you have Takanas Chazal, Chazal had their reason. They had the time of the crow. And now they have how they made, how they have Ekesh Telt, how they tell the Vekta Takana. Over here, Chazal made a Takana because the person is going to get into the matzah. He's going to stoke the flame. Chazal said, what should you do? Mimayit the koyach of the choyim. Do something to the flame. That'll show us you're not in the cooking process. What if I do something strange and it's clear I'm not in the cooking process because I don't cook like that? It's true. You might not come to Stoke, but you were not in the Tekon of Chazal. The Tekon of Chazal was the matziv of Hesech Adas has to be in the flame. You have to show, you have to do something to the flame to be mafchis the chaim. That shows, the hafchas as chaim shows us that he's not, he's not going to stoke. So this case is tremendously cholic from the case of ketuma. So the chazanish, when I have the case of ketuma, I'm affecting the chaim. The chaim of the fire is not as good anymore. You lessen the koyach, the potency of the chaim of the fire. The chazanish says that was the tekan of chazal. Mashain came when you're dealing with a stove of the nature of Chazal and there was a lid, it's true. It's not so normal. And it's true, you're not getting the effects, the full effects of the fire. But you didn't do something to the fire. That's how the Chazanish learns. Namela comes again to Chazanish and he said, that's the Pshat and Rashi. He even learns that the Rambam is like that. He says, you have to do something to affect the Chaim. If you affect the Chaim, then in a Chanan. But if you don't do something to affect the Chaim, a gam, that you did something to the food, clap the relationship of the food to the Chaim. And this is what the Chazanish says. <clears throat> the Chazanish says there has to be memayit the choy mamish. Now, Baisai, let's understand. They ask a kasha on the Chazanish. The kasha is, is that the choy, the Shulchan Aruch and Sif Gimel is not like this. The Shulchan Aruch tells us a story. This was the Mordechai. The person wakes up on Shabbos morning and he sees that his chalent is burning. So he wants to do something. He doesn't want the chalent to burn out. 
So the Shulchan Aruch says, you know what you do? You take a pot, take the pot, put the pot on top of the fire, <coughs> and then put a pot, your chalim pot, on that. What's the shot? Now, it's going to be not as affected from the fire. <clears throat> it's going to be enough away from the fire that it won't be affected from the fire. And you'll be allowed to do chazara because you're not putting it back onto an open flame because now you're blocking it with the pot. So again, the chalent is burning, take off the chalent, put on a pot onto the fire and put the chalent onto that pot. You don't have a problem with chazara because you're not going back to an open flame and it's not going to burn. Shalom Yisrael. So the kasha that Rav Ozner and others asked on the Chazanish, they asked him, I see that the Shulchan Aruch Siv Gimel is not like you're saying. Why? Because the Chazanish came along and said, the Chazanish, once I have this Yisoyed in Rashi, <clears throat> that Rashi is telling me you have to do a Maisaf Chata to the flame Elaine, and it's not enough that you're not close to the flame, etc., you have to do a maisa in the flame itself. So says the Chazanish, what we call a blech is a nice fancy term, says the Chazanish, for an Isser Shabbos. The blech doesn't work, says the Chazanish. You're not doing something to the flame. The flame is the same flame with the same exact potency. It's true. Normal people don't cook with blechs. When a guy comes into the house and he sees a blech, he doesn't know what these Jews are up to. <clears throat> but says the Chazanish, it doesn't matter. You weren't Mekayim, the Tekona Chazal. Says the Chazanish, it's the exact same thing as a Kisei Agabe Kiro. It's not normal to cook like that, but who cares? You didn't do something to the flame. That's how the Chazanish learns. So they asked the Chazanish, how could you say that? <clears throat> this is the first Shulchan Aruch and Sif Kimmel, not like that. Albeit that over there is talking about Chazara, but the rules, so if Klape, these halachas of Ketuma are the same rules. Chazara you're allowed to do onto a Kotim flame, and Shehiyah you're allowed to do on a Ketuma Dika flame. So it says over there, Mefurish, what do you do? You take a pot, put it on the fire, put your chalent, which is burning out, on that. I read the second you took off the chalent, how you let it return the chalent? Because you're returning it to a cotton flame, a flame which is ketuma. What's the ketuma? A pot on the fire. So you see me first that if you have something covering the fire, I guess, and it's not normal, <clears throat> so then that's tantamount to ketuma. And you know who says that? The Goyz Mordechai himself. The Goyz Mordechai says, that's ketuma, it's just like ketuma. What's the difference if I cover it with ashes? if that's not a normal way of cooking. And what's the difference if I cut over it with a piece of metal if it's not the normal way of cooking? As I say, <clears throat> look, Lyra, this is a raya, not like the Chazanish. So the Chazanish says, I see raya ni bedaitchem. I see that you understand that the case of the Mordechai is that the pot is basically a piece of metal. Maybe it's a big pot and you're taking the chalim pot and you're putting it inside that pot. <clears throat> he says, then you have a good cash on it. Because Taka, I would hold that that's no good. Because that piece of metal didn't affect the fire. You didn't destroy the fire. It's true. You made a chilek between the fire and the food. But you didn't mafchis techayim. So he says, I didn't learn the Mordechai like that. I learned that the case of the Mordechai is, says the Chzaynish, who had din in Makadeira. He says, He says, he says, I don't learn the Mordechai like that. I learned the Mordechai that you took a pot and you basically turned it upside down. And now there's a hefsik of Aver. There's a space in between the fire and the top of the pot. So he says, ah, that's a different story. What's that, says the Chazanish. Zok the Chazanish. That's called smicha. You all learned in the sugi that there's something going on over here about smicha when I'm not on the fire, in the fire, I'm next to the fire. Smicha, says the Chazanish, he said, that's a whole different type of idea. He says, when you have a smicha, so smicha has its rules. Sometimes she is mutter, sometimes chazar is mutter. But zakta chazanish, the heter by smicha is that you're not near the fire. So the male zakta chazanish, unbelievable. Zakta chazanish, your blech doesn't work because your blech is not doing something to the fire. Let's say you would make a blech and you would take a blech and you put a bunch of bricks under the blech and raise it up. So the chazanish, oh, now we have everything. It's not a normal way of cooking, number one. And there's a hefzik avir. It's not considered. So it's true, you didn't do something to the chayim, but you did what's called smicha. So said the chazanish, smicha would work. Now, I guess you have to learn in the chazanish that in the kira, the fire went up very high and that that's not called smicha, I suppose. <clears throat> but this was the sheet of the chazanish, that a blech does not work. Now, I must tell you that the ukimto, the way that the chazanish learns, 
He says, so when the Mordechai says, that Mordechai says that it's Kigrufa Piktuma, he means like there's a heter of Grufa, like there's a heter of Ketuma, of covering a flame. That's one type of heter. There's another type of heter, which is Hepsik Avir. Now, it's interesting. The Mordechai should have maybe been Madame Tesmicha and not Ketufa, Grufa Piktuma, but that's how the Chazanish learns. Who argues on this, Rabbi Isai? It seems to be that the Graz and the Kuntus Akron is even cut in the first, not like this. The Graz says that the case is you see your child is burning out, you take a big pot and you put your little pot in that big pot, which means that your pot is going straight flush against the metal, which is flush against the fire. So that's a blech. And the Kafechaim, and Sivkat in Yud, Aleph, he says, Huadin, if you take a Dabra Mavsik and you block the fire, if you take a blech and put it on the fire, so then that is Kiketuma. Kloimar, they're learning the other side of the Chakira. In, what was the Tekonetz Chazal? Was, a lot of everyone agrees that you have to do what the Tekonetz Chazal was, and it's not enough to make your own Akeirim and your own Esachadas. But what was the Gedra of Ketuma? The Chazanish learns you have to do something to the flame. The, the other way you could learn is no. I have to make it that the flame is not effective. If I cover the flame in a way where it's not effective, either I cover it and therefore it knocks out half the flame, or I cover the flame, and that itself takes away from the heat of the flame. What's the Nakuda? Of the Esach Adas. <clears throat> What's good? Is the, it, what was the Nekudah of the Takona? I thought it has to be, it's weird. If it's not weird, then of course you don't have Esach Adas. But if it's weird because I was Mavchis Techoim, Mali, says the Kafachayim, the Graz, Mali, if I'm Mavchis Techoim, because I'm covering it and putting out the, the potency of the Chaim, and Mali, if I block the potency of the Chaim and make it that that Chaim can't affect food, that's also called the Havchos Esachayim. And this is Lemaise, how the Kafachayim learns, the Graz learns, the truth of Rav Moshe and Archaim Chelik Alvsim and Sadi Gimel, which I've mentioned over here, which maybe we'll mention a little bit more today, they all learn not like that. <clears throat> now, Lamaisa, the only question you can ask is, and what do you do with the Bir Alacha? What's the need of the Bir Alacha? Hare Lefi Rashi, no one wants to go against Rashi. Rashi seems to say that if there's a Kisui, then a Kisui is going to be a problem. And this is really the time of the Zainish. Hare, like we started. It can't be that that was the normal way of cooking because then, of course, it's going to be awesome. It must be it wasn't the normal way of cooking. No, if it's not a normal way of cooking and it's covered, so then why is that us, sir? Lefi, what we're saying right now, the Lefi, the Chazanish, it's Gewaldic. Because who cares that it's covered? You didn't do something to the fire. Lefi, the Chazanish, it's Gewaldic. Masha Enkein, if you learn this other Mahalich, that once I made it that the fire is not as effective, so long as it's not a normal way of cooking, so then that is considered Ketuma, that's what Ketuma is. So here it's also Ketuma. The Kisi on top of the Kira, people didn't cook like that. So it's covered flame, I'm uh, uh, lessening the effects of the flame. So this Shaila, the Shevet Alevi, is answering back the Chazanish after the Chazanish told him that a blech is no good. And after he showed him that Sif Gimel, I could answer. Kloimar, really, Sif Gimel sounds more like the Mekilim on a blech. The Chazanish answered that. But now the machmir, the, the mekilim on the black have to answer up. Yeah, but what are you going to do with Rashi? That a kisui is a problem. So that, the Shevet Levi says a little bit of a chilek. And it's interesting. He starts out, he says, I have fear from the Torah of the Zainish. He says, but that's not a kasha. It's interesting what he answers. He says, you have to make a chilek. Hosom, who a kisui arogel shemasimen love bekol yom there, that was a part of the oven. Their ovens had a fire. It had that Toilet seat matzav on top and the lid. Enochanami, they cooked inside, they cooked outside on the sides, and they cooked in the hole. And Enochanami, they didn't cook on the lid. Enochanami, right? But this was a part of the structure. And it, it was too normal, says the Shevet Halevi. Sagam, it wasn't normal to cook there, but it has to be that your Hesach Adas is a Zan nicker dick thing. Mashenkin, if it's something that's always there, so that a person might not chap. And Memela, maybe it's not a total Hesach Adas. Now, but he said, when you hear that svara, and he goes on to say, a blech is never there. So therefore, a blech, a vanda, is a key, the tukana chazal. When you hear that svara, you hear, understand very well the chazanish. I can certainly hear not like that. If people don't cook there, it's a hazakadas. At Kamadi, you hold that lessening the effects of the heat in a way where it's strange is enough. So then I have it. I lessen the heat in a way where it's strange. So then it should be enough on a kisui also. So the chazanish proves from over there that a kisui is just like a blech, and it's not enough. You have to affect the fire mamish. 
Rabbi says, no, we can answer up by Kira. Kira is the normal way. That was normal in their kitchen always. So Mamela, nobody's going to be misyakis to it as a Hesach Adas. But a I definitely certainly understand the side of the Chazanish. The Maisa, the Minig Yisrael, obviously, is not like the Chazanish. Maybe in B'nai Brak. Sorry? Can I trouble the road for the site to shave the Levi so we can later look at it? Uh, the Shevet Alevi is in Chelek Aleph, Simen Tzadi Aleph. There's another one in Chelek Gimel at the end of, Sif, of, of Simen Memtes. Does it Rabbi Yisai? Saif Memtes. Gimel Saif Memtes. But the one where Imamish talks it out is Chelek Aleph, Simen Tzadi Aleph. And in that one he says, his whole body trembles from the Chelek Zainish. <clears throat> whole body trembles. Now, Rabbi Yisai, this is part one. The taste. Now we understand the lundus of ketuma. It's some type of a either like we saw a grace shaila. It, it's obviously coming to a, a taklis of a hesachadas. <clears throat> but is it affecting the flame by ruining the flame? And that's how the chazanich learns that in order to get the tekan, you have to ruin the flame. Or no, even if I didn't ruin the flame, but I ruined the effects of the flame. That's also as a din of ketuma, and then afkamin is a blech. <clears throat> this is a, a tremendous mark like as we obviously take on the mini Israel that the ikr is is not to ruin the fire but to ruin the effects of the fire okay let's continue a bit <laughs> now <clears throat> Marshall let's dine a little bit on the fire itself mm. it's a little bit of a different topic and I'm going to try to connect it in a moment <clears throat> let's see if we're if successful is Rabbi say last week we spoke about a Shiloh the Shiloh was I have food Arab Shabbos, I want to put it in an oven and I don't want to leave my, uh, my uh, I, I want to put it in an oven, I don't want to leave a hot plate on the whole Shabbos, but I can't make a blech in an oven <clears throat> because now you're seeing that's not enough to put up a sign and whatnot and say uh, 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 don't stoke or whatever, you have to do something in the oifin of how Chazal said to do it, you have to do the ticking in the way that Chazal said to do it how could you possibly be Mafchis the chayim in the oven. What are you going to do? A blech, you can put it on a stove top, says the going with Moshe. But in an oven, there's a thermostat. So you're not doing something to lessen the chayim. That's what we said last time. <clears throat> Mamela, if you want to get the chumra of the Mishnah so you're not going to be allowed to leave your oven, you're not going to be allowed to leave inside your oven fully cooked food, even, as, so long as it's mitzamek v'yafalai. If it's mitzamek v'yafalai, so then you're not going to be allowed to leave fully cooked food inside the oven because the Mishnah Bura told us that the Chachili should be chayshish for the sheet of the Rabbana. <clears throat> now, my Mar Muzger, I said last time that uh, maybe I don't have to be machmir. I said maybe in a case of where I don't want to have fire on the whole Shabbos, a hot plate on the whole Shabbos, the Mishnah Bura, we said, never said, he paskins not like Hananya. He just said it's Lichatrila. And when he brings down the kitzer, he clearly paskins like Hananya. <clears throat> so really, Meikra din, if the food is cooked, it's uh, certainly if it's uh, even if it's half cooked, if it's cooked, so then it's not a problem. I mentioned also last time that what happens if there's a potato kogol, which is mitzamik the ralo in the oven, and I have a chicken, which is mitzamik the yafalite. <clears throat> so later on, there's a bir alacha, which discusses if within the same food, it could be the same pot, some of the stuff is mitzamik the yafalite, mitzamik ralo, some of the same stuff in the same pot. But I don't think that would apply over here. It's separate foods. Mistama, once you have it, hold it to problem, even though I have a mania not to stoke, because if I stoke, it's going to make the thing that's mitzamek viralo get ruined. But mistama, <clears throat> we wouldn't say such a thing. And if you were trying to get this chumra, you would have a problem. Now, but I, let's delve a little bit into the svaras over here <clears throat> of the flame, and maybe we can have a different kula. Because like I said, it's a big tzara, sometimes you don't want to leave the oven on the whole entire Shabbos. Excuse me, sometimes you want to leave the hot plate on the whole Shabbos. You just want to leave the food Friday night, especially in the summer months. You want to leave the food in the oven. But I don't want to spend the rest of my life knowing that I'm not doing like the Be'er Lacha. The Be'er Lacha said, L'chatchila, Vaday Toiv. I want to be a Vaday Toiv according to the Be'er Lacha. So I don't want to leave every Shabbos for the next uh, eternity food in the oven that the Be'er Lacha tells me I'm doing an Avera. Or at least L'fidu Rabban and I'm doing an Avera. So let's dine a minute over here. <clears throat> it's interesting. You know, there was. There were those that wanted to possibly say a svara. There, there's a little bit of a svara that you could have said over here. Now, the Misa, there is a shaila in general of our stovetops and in our ovens. If perhaps one could come along and say, 
that the whole entire Takana doesn't apply. The whole Isra doesn't apply. What's the Isra of Chazal? The Isra of Chazal is that Chazal is afraid that the person is going to stoke. So Mamela, we have to come on to all types of Zachan to make sure that he doesn't stoke the flame. The Shaila is, is that does this apply to our modern day stovetop? <clears throat> now again, I'm going to use this as a case study for a moment. And the Mitzvah Shem, in the latest year, we'll go through the Allah the Ma'isa and all the modern day apparatuses, etc. <clears throat> but in Lundis, would it apply to a modern day stovetop and a modern day oven? What's the Shaila? There's different stories that you can clear. For example, everybody said, let's say the fire on your stovetop is to the highest. We never found in Chazal that we're afraid he's going to lower the flame. So maybe that's an Eitzah. Maybe once the fire is to the highest in my stovetop, let's talk about stovetop for a moment. The fire is to the highest. We never find in Chazal that we're afraid he's going to lessen the flame. That's a new chashash. Uh, maybe you should be worried and put the uh, uh, good Shabbos over your light switches because you might come to turn it off. It's a new chashash. It's not a tekan of Chazal. Chazal tekan was the exact opposite. If there is an open flame, fakert, you might get nervous and sahitzed that the flame is going to run out and you might stoke it to make sure it doesn't run out. So I have an idea. <clears throat> I'll turn my stove top to the highest flame. Elamai, I'm afraid he's going to change his mind on Shabbos and want it to be lower. Where did you find such exera? Because I've never made a takana that he might lessen the flame. So this, the Ramayish and the Tshuva and Chelek Aleph and Simon Gimel seems to go that there is a certain level of a light plug in this sugya, which I mean, it's a sham, we're going to have to discuss. But it does seem to be that there's a certain level of a light plug in the sugya, where we say that once there's an open flame, <clears throat> Chazal said open flame, you got to do something of the Tikkun of Chazal to be mafchis dechlein. Hagam, Hagam, it's not going to be Shaykh to stoke, because Kloimar, I'm not afraid he's going to go down and he can't go up. Okay, but let's continue. Maybe the different Maybe I'll say like this. Why in the world is this comparable at all to what Chazal had? Chazal, we're dealing with a barbecue type of matzah where the coals go out. <clears throat> so therefore, we're afraid on Shabbos, the guy's going to get nervous because his coals are going out. Everybody say, what could possibly happen on our stovetop? Let's say it's in the middle. So what are you afraid? You're afraid it's going to go higher. And even if it's at the highest, light plug. But everybody say, what am I afraid of? He's, we're never afraid that he's going to change his mind on Shabbos. Why should I be afraid that he, on Erev Shabbos, decided he wants it to be one level, and now on Shabbos is going to come, he's going to change his mind and want it to go higher. Our fires remain the same and don't go out. So maybe the only time that Chazal made the Tekana was on a type of a flame that gets less and less. So therefore, it needs your help. But we never found that Chazal were afraid that the person is going to come <clears throat> and change his mind on Shabbos. He has a flame which doesn't change. And we're afraid that he's going to change his mind on Shabbos and change the flame and decide that he wants more than what he had previously decided on Arab Shabbos, this is something that is, uh, is difficult to understand. <clears throat> difficult to understand. Even on this, it sounds like from Ramosha, that on that we would have made a light plug. Clape that, we would have made a light plug. Yeah. We would have made a light plug. And that once you have a flame, even though I have no fear that he's going to change his mind, it sounds like Mitzah, that, that itself maybe would have been a reason, and the, a re, even though it would have been a reason maybe to be Mako, but it sounds like it's a low plug. Interesting. Yabiya Oimer, Inchei Lekvav, or Echaim Simen Lamebez, Eiskimel, gives a lot of respect to this far. <clears throat> he says that I'd have no Gzair of Chazal. It's a totally different thing. And Echanami, if you have the barbecues of Chazal, you have to do something to it to show us you're not in the cooking process. But this entire apparatus is something that's not comparable to the flame that Chazal we're talking about. But it seems to be that on that, even that on that, where Moshe said we'd make a light plug. But maybe we can clear something else. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Comes again, the going with Moshe, and he says, wait, wait, wait. Kashu Gvava. Remember in the Sugi Rabbi, he said, Kashu Gvava, if you cook on Kashu Gvava, you're allowed to keep it on an open Kashu Gvava flame as a bear of Shabbos. Why? Because you can't stoke, it's not going to help to stoke, it's just going to go out. It's like paper that's burning. So then he shows us he's a Messiah Das, he's not in the cooking process. <clears throat> Everybody said, wait a minute. I, I have an idea. Why don't we say he's going to bring more Kashu Gvav on Shabbos? Why is it that we allow a person to cook with Kashu Gvav because we say he's not going to stoke? And that shows that he's Messiah Das, he's not in the cooking process. Why don't we say, what do you mean? Maybe you'll see that the fire is going out on Shabbos and he's going to come and add fuel. Says the guy in Ramayisha, you see from over here, an unbelievable thing. You see from over here that we're not chayshish, <coughs> excuse me, you see from over here that we're not chayshish, he's going to add fuel. 
Kloymar, if a person is cooking with such a flame that the only way to fix it is he'd have to add kashu gvava, then we're not going to be chayshish. <clears throat> we're not chayshish, he's going to add fuel. What's the lundus, says Reb Moshe? Reb Moshe has tooth stud that maybe it's a big tircha. So then we're not afraid he's going to go and do a big tircha. And even, says Reb Moshe, Milo Yaskinan, that he has a whole stash of kashu gvava right next to the fire. But Reb Moshe says, Afal Pika, and you see that there's no chashash of him bringing and adding a flame. That wasn't the chashash. Reb Moshe has another side. He says, maybe the only chashash is when, when you're chayte, you just blow. You find in Chazal, he just used to he just blow on the flames. It would be something very easy. He doesn't even have to do a Misa. So maybe we're not afraid that he's going to do a Misa. Because once he does a Misa, I guess he's going to remember. <clears throat> but however you cut it, Rabbi Yisha says that it's clear from the Sugi of Kashuk Vava that we're not afraid he's going to add fuel. It's a Baisai, Claret Rabbi a whole new Tzad to be makel on our stovetops. And in a minute, we'll see in our ovens. A Baisai, in our stovetops, what's going on? He's going to maybe add fire. What does it mean he's adding fire? He's adding fuel. Now, it's true. It's with the greatest of ease, and it's probably even with a greater of ease than what they were dealing with. But Rabbi Yisai, it's not the Tekana Chazal. The Tekana Chazal was that if you have a type of a flame that you could be stoking, then we're afraid that you're going to come to stoke, and therefore you have to go and do something that shows us that you're a the chaim and you're out of the cooking process. But by Kachu Gvava is a type of fire that they weren't geyser on. Why? I, he could bring Kachuk Vava. They weren't geyser, you're going to bring fire. That's what Ramesha says. They weren't geyser that you're going to bring fire, <clears throat> fuel. Like I saw, he says, Ramesha, maybe we could say the same thing by a stovetop. Uh, what, what are we afraid? He's going to add fuel by an electric oven, you can clear, or by an electric stovetop, you can clear. What's he going to add? Friction. What exactly is going on there? Maybe we have to get electricians to explain to us, maybe soon. <clears throat> but says Ramesha, that's what we would have said. And Ramesha has a very big tzad like that. And then it sounds like, he says, Ramesha seems to be very uh, respectful to this stad. He comes out, the Misa, that it's still there could be a light plug, Kanira, a flame that could be changed. Maybe the gather of the Takona Chazal was any flame that could be changed, that is changed with ease, they made on it a light plug. If that was together the Takana, then that would apply to ours too. And a Hanami, they weren't geyser on Kashu Gvava because that's a type of flame which you have to add fuel and you'd have to change in a very aggressive way. But if you have a flame that it's easy to change the Mida and the level of that flame, so then they were geyser on any flame which is easy to change the Mida of that flame. No, nope. light plug, light plug. <clears throat> but let's clear, let's think for a second. Okay, so that's why our stovetops need a, a blech, and that's why Lefi, the first part of the year, blech works. But let's go into the oven a minute. How does the oven work? Let's think what's going on over here. So at first I was going to say, well, let's see. When my oven's on two, 200, and I want to make it higher, what does it mean higher? I want it to go to 500. What does it mean? So Kipchutai, certainly in the old ovens, what it meant was, is that it's on 200. The fire is the exact same oven, fire, by side. but the thermostat says, okay, normally I go off once I hit 200. Now I'm going to wait to go off until I hit 500. So what does it mean that I'm going to raise the temperature of the fire? It means I'm going to tell the fire, don't go off. Now, ah, if that's the case, so now we can clear like this. Who says Bichlal that that's in the Gzera? Mamanashach, what's the case over here? If, what are you afraid I'm going to do? You're afraid that the fire's on in my oven and it's at 200. And now I'm going to go and turn it to 500, which means what? I'm going to not allow for the fire which is going in my oven to go off. You know what that is? It's a grama. I'm not saying you're allowed to do this on Shabbos Chatz V'Chalilo. But Akaponim, Klape the oven, what are you doing? Klape right. the fire, what are you doing? You're doing a grama. What was Chazal concerned with? Chazal were concerned you're going to go and stoke the coals and be over in Avara. What would happen in this case if I were, it's, it, let's say the fire is on. It's at 200. And I now turn it to 500. What did I just do? If the fire in the oven is on, what I just did is I made it that the oven won't go off. The fire won't go off. It's the same fire. I just prevented it from going off. So then I decide, what are we afraid? You're going to come to Stoke and be over in a Drabanon. Or let's say I'm wrong. Let's say the oven, the thermostat is off. Right now you go into the oven and the thermostat is off. Let's say that's the case. 
Meaning, not, not the thermostat is off, the fire is off because the oven is 200 degrees. So the middle of the oven says, I'm hot enough, I'm okay. Now you're going to go, we're afraid, and you're going to turn the oven to 500 degrees. Okay, oh, and that's good. That, that would be a problem, right? Because now the fire, you're going to turn on a fire. Oh, you're going to turn on a fire. If the oven's off, where did we ever find such a ever? If the fire is off, excuse me, if the fire is off, so then what are we afraid? You're going to make a new fire? That's not included even in the light plug of Rav Moshe. What was Rav Moshe's light plug? Rav Moshe's light plug was if you have a fire, so then even if it's a stokable fire or not stokable fire, whatever, the highest level, whatever the case is. So Rav Moshe said, this is a fire which could be monkeyed with, a fire that could be monkeyed with, light plug. Very good. But let's say I'm inside my oven now and the oven is on 200 and it's a thermostat. So what are you afraid of? You're afraid that mamanashach. I'm going to go and monkey with it. What happens when I monkey with the 200 degrees with the thermostat? So if it's 200 now and the fire's off because the oven feels hot enough, so then what happens? It's going to go on. So we're afraid. Ah, we're very afraid. You're going to go and turn on a fire. That's the shash. Where did we ever see such a tekan as chazal that we're afraid you're going to turn on a fire? I'm afraid there's no fire at all. You can only make a light plug when there's a fire. But there's no fire. <laughs> if it's, it's thermostat is on 200 and the fire's off, so we're afraid you're going to go and monkey with it and turn on a fire? Nobody ever made such a in the world. El am I, the case is that what? That it's on 200 and the fire's on and you're going to monkey with it. If the fire is on, then all I'm doing by adjusting the, 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 the temperature is I'm telling the fire to remain on. So what's the problem? Maybe the only time Chazal said that it's Xera, it's Shem Yechate, that could lead Lide, the derise of Havara. So you'll say, fine, but maybe it's off. So it'll lead to the Havara, because but that's a whole new Xera. The Chazal were afraid that you can make a new flame. So this is why Rabbi Isai, in our ovens, it's Bechlal Nat Pashit. And maybe even Ramosha would possibly agree. It's Bechlal Nat Pashit that there's an Isser Shehia. Of course, this doesn't work for Chazara. Everything we're saying over here is only Klape Shehia, but not Klape Chazara. Kloimar, by Chazara, we have to look at, is this the normal cooking? Is this the normal way that you cook? Is it a normal flame? So no, it's a normal flame. So of course it's a problem. But if you want to dan on the Gzeira of Shami by Chazara, the Gzeira was Merci. So about if he takes the food out of the oven, he won't be allowed to put it back in. I guess if he has to take out one of the foods from the oven, so then take out just the chicken or the kogel face and leave the other one in. Maybe if you pull out the tray a little bit and it's still connected to the fire, maybe that'd be okay. Now, Boisai, I'm telling you, I'll be the first to admit, I'm saying Chedushim Gedoylem. The only thing is, is that now when that person comes to me and he says to me, I don't want to leave on my fire the whole entire Shabbos, my hot plate the whole entire Shabbos. I don't want to leave on my hot plate. It's going to make the whole house hot. <clears throat> I want to leave on my oven, but I'm afraid of the beer aloha, that the beer aloha told me, and my food is fully cooked. And I'm having the meal in two hours and my food is fully cooked. Right? I'm afraid of the beer local that he told me you should be machmir, not like Hanan. You should go like the Rabbanan and even I'm You should have a blech. You should do ketuma. And in my oven, I can't do ketuma. There's nothing I could do. So now, maybe if I say vait, I'll say since the Yikra is like Hananya. And in the oven, it's not Pashit Bichlal that the stoking has anything to do with the original Takonas Chazal. So now I can add a lot of spars together. Number one, according to Hananya, and that's the Yikra Psakalach, it's mutter. So therefore, what you're doing is mutter mikra de. Elamai, but you're not getting the chumrah. So I'll tell you, first of all, we saw a lot of reasons why our ovens and stovetops aren't, we're not afraid the person's going to change his mind. Elamai, you want to say, lay plug. Right? But also, we're not afraid that you're going to add fuel. You want to say, lay plug on that too. But maybe on what I'm saying, there's no lay plug. Maybe there's no lay plug in Klape, what we're speaking about. If the oven is a thermostat oven, and you're taking it from 200 to 500, maybe there's no play plug bichlal. Because if it's on, you're just leaving it on. That's bichlal, nothing to do with the takana chazal. And if it's off, go and make a takana that he might turn on a fire. That's a whole different takana. So bizarre, I would think that in this case, it would be permitted for him to leave it in and not even to feel guilty. To leave it in on Erev Shabbos, again, Kapi Chazar, he would have to be nervous. He would have to make sure he doesn't have a black. So if he wants to take something out, like pull out the tray legamre, and then put it back. So then he's putting back the tray into an oven, which is on. Obviously, I'm not getting involved now. If when you're opening the oven, is it turning on the light? So we're talking about a case, obviously, where it doesn't turn on the light. 
etc. Where it's not a psikresha, or where the light is already on, the fire is already on, etc. Now, by side, I'll say one last nekuda. <clears throat> one last nekuda. The um, I'll just let you say, think about one last nekuda, by side. Based on a lot of what we spoke about and what the Lo'ilam is learning, in, in a crockpot, the Chayra, you're certainly going to have this problem of Shehiyah. Chazara, okay. That's for sure a problem. A, a, a crockpot is a normal cooking apparatus. It's a normal way of cooking. And you have to go and do something to be mafchis to chayim. Now, Baisa, I'm going to tell you the secret. What are you going to think to do? You're going to take silver foil and put it inside your crockpot. You know, it, it meaning inside the, the, I don't know what you call that piece, the, the, the oven. And you're going to put it inside that oven, between the oven part of the crock pot and the actual pot. Now, in Mitzvah Shem, there's a problem which Shlomo Zaman had, which we'll talk about a different thing that has to do with tuna cans and dust. That's a different thing. I'm talking about right now, very simply, the actual crock pot shahiyah. So now, whether you want to be chayshish for the Rabbanin, or let's say... It's a third cooked, which is a normal thing in a crockpot. So now you have to know that to do shihi on a crockpot is a problem. It's a third cooked, and that's a problem. In a chanami, there's a sheet in the Rishonim that the Bir Lacha brings down that if you're not eating the chalent until tomorrow, so then maybe there's a mokim bidi evit to be makel. Okay, we're not makel on that sheet. And anyways, today many people are having chalent on Friday night. But I want to know how do I do shihi in a crockpot? So you'll say, very simple. I'll take silver foil and I'll put it all around. If I say, now that you learned that the gather of Ketuma is not just to do some hecker, some weird thing, something strange or whatever. No, the gather of the hecker is be mafchis the chayim. Go and do something which either covers up the chayim, prevents the chayim, it uh, lessens the chayim, it lessens the effect of the chayim to the pot in a crack pot. If you know anything about a little, little tiniest bit about science, so then a crockpot has a little tiny air between the insert and the actual casing. There's a little bit of air. And that insulates. Air insulates. When you take a piece of silver foil and you put it in there, you know what you're doing? You're conducting. You're making it hotter. You're taking the fire and you're helping the fire get to your pot. So a bite side, if you take silver foil and just wrap it around your ins- the inside, the oven piece of the crockpot, you're not doing a sheet. You're not, you, you, you didn't do anything. Because are you going to say it's strange? The gather that the Kona Chazal was not just do something strange that we saw the whole day. It's take away the effects of the heat of this item. You're not taking away the effects of the heat. You're making it hotter. Now, someone told me that parchment paper is not like this. I don't know the Matthias. So the parchment paper, taka, the heat goes through the parchment paper and it does taka, affect the heat and makes it less hot. If that's the case, great. Now, Rishlan Zalman had a problem with that mono, which we're going to learn a different time. And Klappe, his problem, his Eitzah was to take something and raise up the pot. And that would be a shtikol Eitzah. If you raise it up, let's say, with a tuna can, now you still have to cover all the fire. It's not enough to just take the tuna can and that's it, because obviously the fire is still affecting the pot. You'd have to now raise it up. That takes care of Shalom Zalman's problem, which I don't want to go into now. That problem is not so pashit. But once you raise it up, now if you cover it with silver foil, ah, so that already, it's not going to conduct it. Because now, you understand there's much more air. So that already will enable Taka some level of Afchas Sachayim. So this is a very important Nekud Rabbi Yisai, <clears throat> like I'm seeing over here, a few aluminum balls under the crack, and then line it with silver foil. That's how you do Shehiyah. And of course, you'll be allowed also to do Chazara, assuming it's fully cooked and all the other rules. But based on what you learned today, if you, all you would do is take silver foil, and wrap around the pot and put it inside the insert. If anything, you're making it hotter. And now that you know the lumdis, you realize that that's no good. And you didn't. And you, it would be an iser shehia, assuming the case is under Michael ben Drusai, or if you want to get the sheet of the rabbanon. And it's a shem abayzai. We'll be continuing next time. That's a shem. I wish you all bracha. This time I have to run out. I can't ask any answer any shilas because I have to get the myriv. Because Taka, you know what tonight is, but I can't say it because I don't want to have a problem. So I wish you all a good yantif. Don't forget, in Yerushalayim, there's only two yamim toifim. There's like Mo'imer, like Mo'imer, and everything in between. Bracha, bracha, bracha. And actually, everything in between is Chalamoyed.
Okay, Rabbi Sai. Yes, we're looking forward to seeing you next week as we continue. We're going to try to chaza the um, shevet, the first part of this year, which is the shevet Alevi um, and the chazanish.